This video is sponsored by Pathfinder LED. This is the dynamic LED spoiler for the 2021 Plus Honda Goldwing Tour. This stylish and aerodynamic spoiler enhances the appearance of your Goldwing Tour trunk with high quality OEM fit and finish for an integrated factory look. The spoiler features enhanced LED running lights that remain on for additional visibility. The dynamic brake lights flash when the brakes are applied for additional safety. And the sequential turn signals let drivers know your intention. Pathfinder LED also gives you the option of switching between amber or red turn signals. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install this exciting new product. I'm going to include chapter markers in the description of the video so that you can skip ahead to specific steps if necessary. Here are all of the tools required for this installation. I'll put links in the description of the video where these tools can be purchased. This part requires a Pathfinder LED power accessory hub be installed or compatible power distribution hub. This is to protect your CAN bus electrical system and allow you to add additional accessories in the future. Check the link above or in the description for a video on how to install the power accessory hub. Remove the left and right hand side side covers. Painted parts should be placed on a soft surface. For detailed, in-depth, step-by-step instructions on how to remove various parts from the motorcycle, refer to my Honda Goldwing maintenance video series. Remove the two 6mm Allen bolts at the front edge of the seat. Be careful not to drop the bolt or the washer when removing. Now repeat this on the other side of the motorcycle. Disconnect the heated seat connector on the right side of the motorcycle. Lift up on the very front edge of the seat to release the two nylon pins. Carefully lift the seat up and forward while making sure that the heated seat connector clears the frame rail. Remove the passenger grab rail from the right hand side of the motorcycle by removing the two 10 mm bolts. Make sure to hold the grab rail with one hand as you remove the bolts so that it won't fall and scratch the saddlebag. Remove the single self tapping JIS screw located underneath the passenger armrest on both sides of the trunk lid. Remove the six self-tapping screws that hold the passenger backrest to the trunk lid. Make note that these screws have longer threads than the ones we removed from underneath the passenger armrest. With the screws removed, you can now carefully lift up on the passenger armrest to release the passenger backrest, but be careful there is a wire connected for the heated backrest. We must release this connector before we can remove the passenger backrest. Press down on the small tab on top of the connector to release it from the base, and then you can remove the passenger backrest. Locate the small tab on the underside of the connector base and lift up with your finger to release it from the stay. This cable is also attached to the trunk lid with a small metal clip. You can lift up firmly on this cable to release that clip. Next, we need to remove the trunk front lower panel shown here. Remove the two self-tapping screws that hold the trunk front lower panel in place. Tilt the panel forward from the top and it will come right out. Mm -hmm. 
there are six 5mm socket bolts that hold the trunk lid onto the hinge assembly. These must be removed using a 5mm Allen wrench. Okay, so we're going to be removing these three screws. And when we do that on both sides, this trunk lid will come off. We have to be very careful before we release the last two screws to be holding this trunk lid from underneath right here. It's not very heavy, but you want to make sure you have it secured. If you have a friend to help you, even better. But as long as you have your hand under here when you remove the last two screws, you should be fine. Start by breaking all six of these socket bolts loose before removing them. I'm going to remove the forwardmost bolt and the inner rear bolt first, leaving the rear outside bolt in place to hold the lid on while I remove the other side. And here you can see I've left that rear outer bolt in place for now. Now I'm going to repeat the process on the other side of the motorcycle. You always want to make sure you're holding on to this trunk lid as you remove these last two screws. So after I remove this screw, I'm going to keep holding this trunk lid while I walk around to the other side. You never want to let go of the trunk lid once you've removed all the screws on one side. Again, if you have a friend, all the better. See, it wants to fall. And I don't want to put any stress on that plastic. So I'm going to keep holding this as I walk around behind the bike. And since I'm better with my right hand than my left, that's why I'm doing this one last. Applying a little bit of pressure with my left hand to keep it held in place. And once this screw comes out, the trunk will be free. Once the trunk lid is free from the trunk base, you can now set it in a safe place. You'll also notice I've put down some towels to have a nice, soft, clean surface to set the trunk lid because we don't want any damage on this paint. Eventually, we're going to have to flip this lid over upside down. We want to make sure we have clean surface for this lid to sit on top of. We need to remove the right-hand side trunk side panel shown here. The trunk side panel is held in place with these three pushpin rivets and these three self-tapping screws. These two screws do not need to be removed. You can use the tip of a screwdriver or a pick to push down on the center post of those pushpin rivets. Then use your fingernail to remove the clips. Now let's remove those three self-tapping screws. You'll notice that these screws have those shorter threads. There is one more pushpin rivet that needs to be removed located at the very front top of the panel. The panel is held in place with a series of clips along this edge. There are two plastic hooks along the bottom edge that go into slots on the trunk liner. There are also some small plastic clips at the rear edge that fit into the trunk liner. To remove this panel, we're going to begin by pulling at the very top front edge to release the clips, and then we'll carefully slide the panel backward to release the hooks. We'll hear some popping. Don't be concerned about that. It may help to wiggle the panel slightly to help release the clips and the hooks as you slide it backward. We also need to remove the speaker grill on the right hand side. There are two self tapping screws on top of the speaker grill that need to be removed, and another of those push pin rivet body clips at the very bottom front edge. As you remove these screws, make note that these have the shorter threads. Remove the push pin rivet like we have the other ones. 
now you can slip the speaker grill from around the hinge and trunk assembly. We need to separate the trunk lid liner from the painted trunk shell. And to do this, we'll need to flip this lid over onto a clean, soft surface like I have with these towels so that we can remove the screws. We're going to remove the trunk latch striker rods shown here by removing the four self-tapping screws. This striker rod, you'll notice that there is a slight bend forward, or actually it's to the back of the trunk. This is the rear of the trunk lid. An important safety tip is to never set your screws or your other parts on the towel where you're working. You could inadvertently slide the trunk lid over onto one of those screws and scratch the paint. I always like to keep these parts in a separate cup off to the side. Now let's remove the second striker rod. The trunk lid liner is held in place with these seven self-tapping screws. Let's remove those seven self-tapping screws. To separate the liner from the trunk lid, begin at the front edge like I'm doing here on these pointed pieces and separate the liner in that position first as you push forward and the liner will come loose. Remove the liner and set it off to the side for now. Next we need to remove these two small painted covers and we do that from the inside of the trunk lid. There are four self-tapping screws that hold these in place and these are very small screws. With the screws removed you can now lift these covers from the trunk lid. Refer to the instructions that came with your Pathfinder LED spoiler and cut the templates out carefully. We're going to be drilling two holes in the right side cover and one on the left side cover. Carefully place the templates you cut out on the underside of the cover per the instructions. Use a sharp pick or an awl to punch down onto the center point of each of these templates. This will create a proper mark for our drilling points. I like to cover the painted portion of these covers with a piece of masking tape. That will help to prevent any paint from flaking off after we drill our holes. I'm going to be using a cordless electric drill to drill my holes. I'm using a very small drill bit to drill a pilot hole and I'll come back later and drill these holes out larger. Now I'll use my step bit to drill down through the front side or the painted side of the cover through our pilot hole until I get to the desired size. Now the instructions say to drill an eight and a half millimeter hole on each cover. I found that eight millimeters was good enough, it more than enough size, and I never could find an eight and a half millimeter drill bit, so I just used the eight millimeter setting on this step bit. Now I was able to drill these holes by holding the cover in one hand and the drill in the other, but be careful if you do this, you don't want to drill into your hand. And here you can see I have the 8mm hole drilled in the left side cover. Now we can drill the other two holes in the right side cover. One is an 8mm and one is a 10mm. Make sure you refer to the instructions. You want to make sure to get the correct hole in the correct position. Reinstall the covers by inserting these two tabs into these slots first and then pushing the cover down onto the screw bosses as shown and replace those screws that we removed earlier. 
While I reinstall the second cover, another quick reminder that if you want more in-depth, detailed, step-by-step -step instructions on all of the things we're talking about today, check out my 2018 Plus Honda Goldwing maintenance video series. And this is how the painted side of the trunk lid should now appear. Now is a good time to mark the wiring harness. I'm using a silver Sharpie pen and I'm going to mark it according to the instructions at the appropriate distances as they show on the instruction sheet. Next, I'm going to install these wire clips at the appropriate measurements that we just made. Make sure you read the Pathfinder LED instructions for all the details on where to install these. I'm not completely tightening these right now because I may need to make some minor adjustments later, so I'm going to leave the long tabs in place. Next, I'm going to clean the trunk liner using some isopropyl alcohol per the instructions. Now I'm going to tape the wire harness to the top of the trunk liner, again following the instructions, and I'm using gaffer tape to hold this harness in place on the trunk liner. This is what the gaffer tape looks like. It comes on a roll. I'll put a link in the description below of how you can order this. It's kind of a fabric tape. It's very easy to tear, and it uh, is easy to remove if you ever do need to remove it. And this is what the top of the liner will look like once you have the tape installed correctly. Locate the package containing the two self-tapping screws and flat washers. Using some isopropyl alcohol on a microfiber towel, I'm going to clean off the area that the 3M tape will be sticking to and you do this to not only clean the surface, but to remove any wax or any grease that might be there, and it'll help you get much better adhesion of your 3M tape. And then make sure that you dry it really well. Next, we're going to feed the two connectors that are on the spoiler down through the 10 millimeter hole that we drilled earlier. You'll have to probably do this one connector at a time so that they'll both go down through that hole. And then I'm going to flip the spoiler over on the other side so that we can begin to remove that 3M tape. But we're not going to remove it all. We're just going to remove a little piece. Actually, we're going to tear off a little piece and leave it so that we can remove it once the spoiler is in place. We're going to cut a slit into that red backing material and peel just a little bit of it off. Here you can see I'm using my utility knife just to cut a slit kind of in the center, right in the center of that 3M tape, and it takes a little bit to get that to lift off that gray tape because it's very, very strong tape, but you just want to peel that backing off. Now you want that backing to kind of be sticking out from the rear end of the spoiler so that once you get the spoiler in place, you'll be able to grab it with your fingers and pull the remainder of the tape off. So you want to do this on both sides, obviously. You'll notice the two strips of 3M tape on the little tips of the spoiler as well. And we're going to peel that back about halfway and bend it so that it kind of hangs out the side. And once we get the spoiler in place, that will give us a way to grip the rest of that backing material from the side and pull the rest of that backing material off. Now we're ready to lift the spoiler and turn it around and put it into position. Make sure you feed the wire all the way through that trunk lid. And the two little mounting posts on the bottom of the spoiler will go inside those 8 millimeter holes we drilled earlier. And then you'll carefully lift up that trunk lid and install the screws underneath. Make sure you include the flat washer and the self-tapping screw. You can kind of see the post there poking through that uh, trunk lid. And we've installed the one on the right-hand side. Now we're installing the one on the left. Now you don't want to tighten these down yet. You just want them about halfway tight. But you want to leave some threads because you're going to, remember, you still have to install that 3M tape. So you don't want these so tight that you can't move that spoiler if you need to from above. 
And now we're ready to grab that 3M backing and peel it all the way off, remove it completely. And I'm kind of holding the spoiler up with my left hand, as you can see there, as I pull that backing material off, making sure those mounting posts are still in the holes on the trunk lid. So I'm just kind of going along slowly, pulling that backing material off, making sure we get it all off on both sides. And then I will press that spoiler down into place, making sure everything is nice and level and lined up correctly. Once I'm comfortable with the location of the spoiler, I'm going to go ahead and press it down a little bit. And now we're going to install those little I call them wing tips. They're actually the ends of the spoiler. And as you can see, we're just going to pull out that red backing material off that tape. And I'm going to press and hold that into place for about three minutes. I'm not going to make you watch the whole video, but I'm going to hold this all down into place for three minutes till I make sure it's really well adhered. Now I've already held the main spoiler down for three minutes and now I'm just going to hold each end of those tips down for about three minutes just to make sure we have good adhesion. And once you have that 3M tape adhered, you can then tighten those screws. Now you don't have to over tighten these. Remember you are screwing into plastic but those washers do help distribute some of that force. But you want these firm, but they don't have to be over tightened. So you just have to kind of do it by feel. And next we're going to use some of that gaffer tape to tape down the wiring harness that comes out of the spoiler. And we're going to tape it so that those two connectors kind of end up where that rectangular hole is in the front portion of the trunk lid. So I'm basically just set the liner upside down into the lid because we have to get our wires connected. And you want to make sure you're connecting the correct color to each other. Here are the connectors to the harness. And then down here are the connectors that go to the light. So I'm going to set the camera over here. You may not be able to see what I'm doing, but basically, I'm just trying to get these uh, colors to match up. Right now, I've got the one that has the white wire, and I see it over here. I think that's it. Okay. That should be plugged in. Make sure you're plugged in good and firmly. And now, we should be able to set our liner back into the lid. Just kind of lays right back down into place on this motorcycle. With the trunk liner back in place, you can now go ahead and reinstall the seven self-tapping screws that we removed earlier. Don't forget to reinstall both of the striker rods, making sure that the bend is toward the rear of the trunk lid. When reinstalling the trunk lid, we're going to do it in reverse order of how we removed it. I always like to keep my Allen wrench in my pocket so it's handy because I'm going to be holding this trunk lid and I'm going to have to grab my tool. I'll try to get the bolt started with my fingers first and then I'll grab that Allen wrench and tighten it. And remember, we're going to start with the outside upper, in this case it's upper, it's actually the rearmost outside socket bolt. And even though you can't see it, I'm actually holding the trunk lid up with my left hand as I'm getting this all positioned and into place. I'm trying to get that bolt started with my right hand, and then I will grab my Allen wrench to begin tightening it. I actually have the second socket bolt that I'm going to install on the other side. I actually keep it in my mouth. I don't recommend that you do that. You could just lay it down somewhere so you know you're going to be able to get to it very easily because you're going to probably not have a hand free when you go around to the other side. Once again, I'm having to hold this in place and then I'll 
go up, you'll see in a second, I'll reach up into my mouth and grab that other bolt. I'm not saying you should do that. I don't want you to swallow one of these bolts. And then I will get it started by hand, and then I'll tighten it with the Allen wrench. And now we can install the other four socket bolts to secure the trunk lid to the hinge assembly. So if you remember those little wire clips we installed earlier on the wiring harness, you'll notice how this one is attached on the left side. Well, there is a slot on the right side hinge, and that's where we're going to put the first clip inside there. And once I get it in there and clipped in, I'm going to come in with some wire cutters. Actually, I guess I could go ahead and tighten it up and then uh, use some wire cutters to cut off that excess piece. Now the second clip is a little further down on the harness and it is actually going to fit into this slot on the front of the hinge mount and you'll find that slot just above the speaker and we can go ahead and snap that into place and then we'll cut off that excess like we did on the previous one. This wire harness is going to wrap around the outside of that speaker enclosure and go underneath the speaker in between the saddlebag and the speaker and eventually underneath this frame rail you see here. I want to clean off the outside of that speaker enclosure using some isopropyl alcohol because eventually we'll be taping that wire harness to that speaker enclosure using some gaffer tape once we get the wire harness completely in place. Here you see I've kind of tucked that wire harness up underneath that speaker mounting uh, in between the saddlebag and the speaker. Next objective is to get those little connectors and that wire harness to pull up underneath that frame rail. And the reason we're doing that is we don't want the seat to crimp these wires when we reinstall the seat. So you want all the wires to be underneath the frame rail. And also that little round bar that connects the two, the left to the right frame, it needs to go under that as well. Now I'm using some hemostats to kind of help me fish those wires under Underneath that frame rail. You don't have to do that, but it, it is a handy little tool to use. And now we can go ahead and tape down that wire harness to that speaker enclosure as I'm doing here, just using some gaffer tape. And here I'm just preparing the wires for my power accessory hub. I'm inserting the wires into one of these Wago connectors and we will eventually connect our spoiler lights up to these as well. These little Wago connectors are very handy and I am preparing all of the wires that are necessary for this installation. The black which is a ground, the yellow, there is a blue wire and also a white wire now the spoiler wire harness has these little plug and play connectors on there, but we're not going to use those for this installation. We're going to actually cut off these connectors and we're going to strip back those wires and then plug them directly into these Wago connectors. Once you have the wires on the harness stripped back, as I show here, and you kind of twist them, it's just a matter of matching up the colors, red to red, blue to blue, and so forth. And when you lock down those little levers on that Wago connector, that wire should not. You should be able to tug on it, and it should not come loose. And here I'm using my vice grip wire stripper to strip back these wires off of the other side of the harness, where you have the black, the yellow, and the white wires. And we'll hook those up to the uh, correct Wago connectors as well. Now is a good time to test the spoiler to make sure those lights work. Of course, you could do this before you even install the spoiler just to make sure. But there we make sure the running lights work. We're testing the left and the right turn signals and, of course, the flashing brake light. Before replacing the painted side panel, we have to replace this speaker grill cover. And to do that, you just slip it in place over the hinge assembly. 
and then reattach the two self-tapping screws on top and there's one push pin rivet at the very bottom front edge. Make sure you're holding this in place so that it gets a good connection and then to seat that rivet you just push in on that pin and now it's locked in place. If you study the back side of this painted panel, you'll notice at the bottom there's a couple of hooks uh, that will slip into slots on the center painted rear panel of the trunk, shown here. And you want to line those hooks up first and then press the panel into place. And at the rear of that center panel, you'll see some other slots and there's some little tabs that slip into there as well from the rear of this painted panel. Once you get those hooks lined up in those slots, then you can press the entire side panel inward so that it snaps into the place, those little clips, and then push it forward to lock those hooks and those rear clips will go into place as well. Replace the push pin rivet at the very front edge of the panel. Now we need to replace the three self-tapping screws. Remember, these are the screws that have the shorter thread length. And lastly, for the side panel, we're going to reinstall those three push pin rivets. They've all been reset, so the posts are in the up position. And we're just going to go ahead and set these down inside those holes. And then we'll come back down and lock them into place. Now we need to replace the trunk front lower panel. And basically it just slips into place. And then we're going to reinstall the two self-tapping screws from inside the trunk. Okay, you'll notice I've rerouted this. I reinstalled that clip back onto the trunk lid. And here I have the connector for the heated seat for the passenger. And I'm going to go ahead and slip this over this little plastic stay just like this. It just slips right on there like that. Okay, so we're ready to reinstall this passenger backrest. And the first thing we want to do is reconnect the heated seat connector for the passenger backrest. Kind of set this up here like this and uh, kind of tip it forward like that. So now that is snapped into place and then you just simply rotate this forward down and that's how it should fit right there. Now we can replace the screws that hold the passenger backrest in place. These are the screws with the longer threads. Replace the self-tapping screws that go under the passenger armrest. These are at the very front of the trunk lid, and there's one on each side. Reinstall the right-hand side passenger grab rail by tightening the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold it into place. When replacing the seat, make sure that the heated connector for the seat is underneath that silver frame rail. And once again, if you want full details, in-depth, step-by-step instructions on how to perform all of these reinstallation instructions, make sure to check out my maintenance video series. You can easily reprogram your turn signals from red to amber or vice versa by following these simple steps. Turn on the ignition and apply the brake lever three times within five seconds. 
The Pathfinder LED spoiler is available in chrome or matte black finish. And like all your LED lighting accessories, you can find these using the link on the screen or in the description of this video.